Yeah. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for the Saturday team led by Minister Misty. Thank you, Lord, for healing her. Thank you, Lord, for giving us that miracle. And thank you for all your faithful children who stand in the gap all through the week, interceding on our behalf. We thank you, Lord. Father, we ask that you open our eyes this morning to teach us your mystery. It can only be you to reveal secret things to men to understand. And Father, we are here this morning and say, Lord, <coughs> reveal Yeshua have a share to us this morning. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And um, <clears throat> this morning, by the grace of Elohim, we want to look at one of you know the teachings, brethren, that you sit down there and then you ask yourself, who is? Just like John the Baptist when he saw Jesus coming to him. He says, There's one among us here whom you do not know. That one is greater than I am, whose shoe latchet I'm not able to untie. Brethren, we are looking at one of the, you know, great teachings in the Bible that you ask yourself or any woman, are we able to alter this mystery, to teach this mystery? But we trust him this morning as he will reveal to us through his Holy Spirit that lives in us to reveal this great mystery to man. It can only be him speaking to man and not to us. And brethren, as we read it, no wonder there's a lot of controversy around it. No wonder a lot of people, a lot of, you know, denominations and sects and everything is all about this. Brethren, we want to look at the Trinity Apostle has been dealing with it in a very broad sense, and I urge every one of us to continue to be online to all this period he's been doing, looking at the Godhead. He's just finished on Elohim, and then he will go on to look at the Son and then the Holy Spirit. So we ask everyone to be part of this and to come in and then listen. But today we want to look at an aspect of it that is so, you know, the, um, a little bit of it. And I ask that the Lord, Father, we still re depend on you to reveal this mystery to us. Amen. And brethren, let's go straight to read the scriptures. And when we read the scriptures, I said one or two things around it and see. John chapter 8 from verse 17 to 25. The Bible says, it is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one that bear witness of my I am one that bear witness of myself, and the father that sent me beareth witness of me. Then said they unto him, Where is thy father? Jesus answered, You neither know me nor my father. If you had known me, you should have known my father also. These was spake Jesus in the treasury, as he taught in the temple, and no man laid hands on him. For his hour was not yet come. Then Jesus again said unto them, I go my way, and you shall seek me, and die in your sin. Whither I go, you cannot come. Then said the Jews, Will he kill himself? Because he said, Whither I go, you cannot come. And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sin, for if you believe not that I am he, I am he, you shall die in your sins. Then said he unto him, or they said they unto him, Who art thou? And Jesus said unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. Brethren, when we want to understand the Trinity. There is no need to go far in controversy, who believes, who don't believe. Because we're just going to use these two lessons to bring out the significance and what happens when people do not believe. And why are people doing what they are doing today and living the kind of Christian life they are living is all centered in this central one belief in the trinity and we're just going to i pray that everyone that will hear me can hold on and say father reveal yourself there's no way to go when we read the book of john jesus himself yeshua hamashiach himself 
talked about his divinity. We don't go further. So going to pick up this, he said he's this, he said it. When you read the book of John chapter 14, John chapter 15, John chapter 16, and John chapter 17, to know who exactly he, he, he said he is, brethren, you can see that the enemy just sat down, you know, you know put this all together to confuse men so that they don't appropriate who Elohim is in entirety. In that in John chapter 13, 19 to 20. Now I tell you before it came that when it is come to pass, ye may believe that I am he. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receiveth whomsoever I sent receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. He says, You may believe that I am. He, because the controversy is, is he the father? Is he the one to come? Is he not? So what is he talking about? John 8, 28, the Bible says, Then said Jesus unto them, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall you know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. Now, brethren, let's come to, you know, the teaching on the Trinity. A lot of this is, is God the Father, God the Son. And brethren, we go no further when we read the book of Isaiah. Apostles have read it and then we can also read it again so that everyone's eyes will be opened. And let's go back to the book of Isaiah and then chapter 9 and verse 6. And everyone open your Bible and then we take it from there because the Lord will help us to go into this and to pick out key lesson it nobody can explain it further or clearer than the bible have said it here in isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6 and the bible says there for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given so whether you call him the son of man the son of god in the new testament in matthew mark luke and john let us see for those who said it didn't appear anyone in the old testament it's not seen apostle of tech time please we urge you listening to the audio that has been from since last week is in lesson 10 or 11 now please take your time to keep and many more are coming on the Godhead, on this great vital teaching, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. So when you're, if you're you know, debating whether he's a son, he's not the son, he's only the son of God and everything is written here. And the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God. The everlasting Father, the Prince of Priests, of the increase of his government and peace shall be no end. And upon the throne of David, so whether you call him, he's the son of David, he's just a descendant, he's whatever. If you want to call him, he's the son, but look at where everything is summed up in one. And his name shall be called Wonderful. His name shall be called Counselor. His name shall be called the mighty God. His name shall be called the everlasting father. And in his name shall be called the prince of peace. Of the increase of his government and peace shall know no end. Brethren, we'll take it from here and we go back. There's no one sitting down there and saying, oh, he's only the son. I don't believe it. I'm not Trinitarian. I'm going to come in a second to tell you whether that argument or that belief or that line is profitable or not. You choose. You choose, brethren. Remember, he's coming again. On the last day, everything shall be revealed. And remember, he says, as many as believe him, trust him, receive him, he gave the power, the power to become his own children. When we become his children, Brethren, every father brings the child home and tells them and reveal things and show them things that ordinarily people out will not know. Brethren, when we draw closer, when we draw closer into the realm of intimate relationship with him, brethren, you don't need anyone to confuse you whether the three are one 
or they are not. Whether the Trinity exists or not. No, brethren, when you are there, you opened the word, you opened the scriptures, his spirit will come to speak. We're going to also see again, you know, some of the things that, you know, is so um, wonderful and out there. Yes, we know we will take our time maybe tomorrow because we're continuing to talk about, you know, the offshoots and those who do not believe. And then you can now look back and say, wow, maybe you're an offshoot of them or maybe along the line or maybe you've picked up one or two things. But we can see how Satan deliberately brought up all these things to take away the power, to take away the grace from people so that when they can, when they, when, when they, when, when they take the wrong they don't stand in. Let's see, let's see what the Bible says. The Bible says that God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. He is a spirit. Yahweh is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit. In simple language, simple Times, as if we're teaching to the three-year-old and the six-year-old. If the Bible says that he is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth, what else do we talk about that? So why would we have, you know, controversy or argument in John chapter 4 to say if he is the Holy Spirit. I hope I brought down something. John chapter 4. Let's read it. Verse 24. When Jesus Yeshua was talking to the woman at the well of Samaria. Let's start from verse 21. Then Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor at Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship ye know not what. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. For the hour cometh and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Verse 24, Yahweh, Elohim is a spirit. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Brethren, if he is a spirit and we call him Holy Spirit, what is the difference? Will you call him another spirit? He is holy. He says, be ye holy as I am holy. In simple things, the Lord was just this morning and he just said to me, now come on my daughter, all those that look at the Holy Spirit as something else, is me, I am the Spirit. And then if you put the title there, holy, it's because I'm holy. There's no order. It's still me manifesting in, manifesting myself. That's me. I am holy. And here, Yeshua himself said here that Yahweh is a spirit. Oh, what, what is the confusion when we say in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit? That is how we have known him. The three titles given to him. How he manifests himself as the creator, as the ultimate, as the Abba, as one we look on, as one who redo, who is there for us, as a creator and other. And he revealed himself again as the son, one who redeemed, who saved us, who, who knew from beginning as we've been taught this week. You know, at the, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the creation, it wasn't a plan B to save you and I. He knew what would happen and he set things in place. And brethren, as the Holy One, the Holy Spirit, because he is a spirit, he is not man and he is holy. So when you look at these, brethren, you can see in ordinary terms, the havoc Satan had tried to wreck to deceive man. How did he want? Because he knows when people look at his person as a spirit and undermine it, there's something around it. Every gimmick and every plan he had put in place to make sure 
that man does not make it. Mark chapter 3, 29. The Bible says there, But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost shall never for, shall, um, had never forgiveness, but it is in danger of internal damnation. So what he tried to do is to undermine, to close people's eyes, to not ordinarily think, to say, but hang on, Jesus said that God is a spirit. And they that worship him. And then if he's a spirit, he is holy. So he tries to make people to undermine him. To think that he's just a guide. He's just, he's just there to watch over us. And all those things. is blasphemy. And the Bible says there, and there is no forgiveness for these. Satan wants to keep people down. To make sure that even though they are fervent, they love the Lord. In this one very aspect, they bring down the soul sovereignty of Yahweh and that's it and once that has happened people are in danger of eternal damnation Matthew chapter 21 31 and 32 wherefore I say unto you all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be given unto men but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto them. Any way, any time, you blaspheme God in any time and not believing and not seeing him for who he is and not worshiping him as he ought, as we ought to reverence. You know, when the Bible says that the our body is now his temple, the spirit now lives in us. He wants us to carry this body in holiness and in righteousness that no unclean thing be found in this camp so that our body will be a temple. So what does he do? He wants, that's why when people don't believe in the power that the Holy Spirit is Elohim himself, they defile their body. Not just defiled it. They can put on anything on this body because they don't respect it. They don't honor it because they don't believe it's housing Yahweh himself. And that's why all manner of things, they can mask it. They can put this on it. They can put this on it. They treat it anyhow and everyhow because they don't really understand that. Really, yes, really, is a physical case. Is a physical embodiment, but then it is housing inside of us. No wonder people are not led by him. They are not led by him because they've not accepted him. And no wonder people are rising and falling because they don't see that Elohim himself is coming to live in us. No wonder people can't give him room. They are Christians, but they still want to do it their own way. They are Christians, but their eyes are not really open to see the mysteries he, he, is, he is doing in our lives. And the Bible says there, and whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him because he came to redeem us. He came in that person to do what? To have, have mercy on us, to redeem us from the cause of the law of sin and translate us. That's the reason. And he is there. He showed himself very compassionate, forgiven, redeeming, love. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So uh, the son is an embodiment of love to the sinning world, to the world that should die. But out of mercy, he came, brought himself down unto us. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, Yahweh himself, the A and the Amen, the beginning and the end, the one that dwells in the light that no man approaches. We can't even look to the sun. If you look up to the, you will get blind. How much more he who created. And because people did not, do not see the Trinity. And yet because there's been a lot of controversy and, you know, people who believe, you know, in wrong doctrines and it doesn't really move anything. Yes, they're in apostasy and they're still talking about Trinity. It doesn't move. It doesn't remove what it is. So if you're looking at, oh, but the Catholicism believed it, and this also, it can't be true. Brethren, there's anybody can combine fake and uh, real all at the same time. But brethren, that does not remove the fact that, yes, there is, the, there is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the Elohim, the three in one, the triune Godhead. Brethren, we cannot... But 
brethren, look at what the scripture is saying. Yes, there's a lot of argument there on the on the on the internet. You read and you read, and people quote verses. They quote verses, they go back to quote the book of First John chapter 5, they quote the book of First John chapter 1, and look at how they try to distort the scriptures. And you're so calm and saying, Father, what is this? The enemy has done his best. And in some Bible in versions, if you go there to look at First John chapter 1, some of the things are not there. Deliberately, Satan stole it, them away deleted them from those from those bible that's why we say be careful of the version you read be careful that the what you have in your on your table and you're reading it and you say it's simple yes it's broad yes remember the warnings of jesus when people go the simple way when the multitude go the simple way oh this one is hard Re look diligently how many verses are re removed how many words are removed from what you are reading when the bible says look in the last in the last chapter of revelation if anybody removes anything it says the person's name shall be removed from the book of life if anyone add it says all oh, the plagues do you know all the plagues in the bible there's quite a lot of them brethren who can just ordinary sickness here on earth. Look into your medical journals and read all the sicknesses and big sicknesses affecting every organ and every system. Put them all together and look at the plagues in the scriptures. He says that will come on that person. No wonder a lot of things are going out there. People are taking it the way they think it should be done. The Bible said there in First John chapter 1 verse 1, In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. Brother, let's not go any further. It's very simple. And this same place that is so simple, even a child can understand it, is what people take and they rest with it. And there's no order. In the beginning was it. And that word was with God. And that word was, was him. Yahweh. That's him. John 1 14 and it says and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth the bible says and the word was made flesh he was made flesh he was made flesh in the son in the person of the son brethren we can continue to talk about this in john 8 58, the Bible says, Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am, I am. Moses said to the Lord in the book of Exodus chapter, th chapter 3 and then in verse 14, he says, But who do I tell them? When I get there, that he says, tell them that I am, that I am, I am, that I am. You know what the word I am means. He's just stopped there. Brethren, do you know what he says? He says, I am that I am. It encompasses everything you can think of. It encompasses sovereignty, supremacy. It's it, 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 it connotes the highest you can, all powerful. Brethren, words will fail us. But right there, you're listening to me. Think about it in your own language, whether it's English or Spanish or Igbo or Cantonese or what language you're speaking. The law says, I am that I am. It's still me, all in me, the most powerful. Who has the power to do all? And Jesus says, I am. Before Abraham, I am. I am still, I am. Hallelujah. First Timothy 3 16 and without controversy great is the mystery of godliness God was manifest in the flesh justified in the spirit seen of the angels preached unto the Gentiles believed on in the world received up into glory hallelujah amen brethren when you don't believe this when you don't believe this, no wonder all these sects that do not believe, they, they, they say they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power. 
They deny the power thereof, the power to live above sin, the power to receive him, the power to be called his sons. Because the, the Lord says, look, I am going and you shall receive power. When the Holy Ghost is come upon you, it is that power that comes in when the Holy Spirit comes in upon us. So when you reject it, you will be one that have a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. You can see the mysteries. Brethren, it go no further. You know, that's why I'm saying we're going to explain it so much that you wouldn't want to be on the left at all. You wouldn't want to go there. It's a choice to have a form of godliness, to talk about Yeshua, have a script that says he's the son of God, has a script that says he's of virgin birth, has a script that said he's promised, have a script that said that Yahweh is all and all, but the power now to leave it out is zero. What need? It doesn't make any sense anymore. Because the enemy took time to blindfold men, to tell stories, to bring on lies, which Yeshua himself called him the father of all lies. That lies is still there, even at the tomb. When he resurrected, the soldiers were also given money to tell lies that he did not, that he did not resurrect, that his disciples came secretly at night to take him. Brethren, look at such fable. Who can believe that? In those days, if a prisoner or a soldier is asked to look after a person, a, a prisoner, or a such a one that they accused and, they, and the body is not seen. Of course, we know it in their law those days. Those soldiers will die in the stead. That was what happened when the Philippian jailer thought that everyone in the prison is gone. What did he do? He threw knife to do what? Kill himself. And Paul says, don't do that. We are all here. Don't kill yourself. Because it is. When the soldiers saw what happened, they said, don't worry, we will cover you up. In those times, and you are kept, something is kept under your custody and it escapes, you are punishable of death. So how is it that these men were told and bribery and everything cover up? It's just like a joke, brethren. He resurrected. The lies is still there. We sit on all the while he says, how can I confuse them? The book of Isaiah he had says he's the counselor. He's the mighty God. He's the everlasting father. I'm going to confuse. I'm going to. But brethren, remember, the Lord can use the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. He's able, if he can speak, through the mouth of an oxen. Brethren, how much more? You know, using anyone. So people saying, oh, this denomination believed it. Therefore, is a lie. God can speak through anybody. He can. He spoke through. Even through the mouth of Gamaliel, he spoke through. He even spoke through the mouth of the high priest who was there. The Bible says, and he said, it is needful that a man should die for the sin of many. And the Bible reckoned there that is not that he's speaking it because he's filled of the Holy Spirit, but because he was the high priest of the year. So the Lord even used a man who was there to condemn him to speak mystery and truth. Brethren, his ways are past searching. But what we want to let stay out this morning, because tomorrow we're going to take our time to look into those that don't believe and how these dissensions and all these diversities and all these you know controversies has really, really, really the ultimate aim of Satan is to take away the power of the Holy Spirit. When Jesus said to the disciples, don't go anywhere for me. Because, brethren, we are in the human form. We are created in his image. We are still flesh and blood. He needs to endow us. So Satan knows that when the Holy Spirit comes and dwells us and we realize who he is, that he's Elohim, he is God, we will reference him. We will carry ourselves in dignity, in awe of him all the days of our life. He will have no place with us. So what did he do? He tries to chip in. But Jesus had warned, don't ever be among those that try to chip in it. Don't. How do you know? Look at them. It doesn't matter how many people, all sorts of things written out there, arguments and all that. But then we're going to see. This kind of, the Bible says they rest with the word. 
you can see how simple men sat down to wrestle with the word. And then we can also see what their lives look like. What they, it's not like we're trying to accuse them. It's all on the internet. It's there on public domain. Everyone can read it for yourself. We just pick out all those sets that says it is not. Let's look at how. They is either they're in adultery or they're in polygamy or they're in wickedness. They're in strife and there is no way. They're in blindness or there is no love in them. And there is, when you look at their life, you could see how Satan has really gone in to make sure that man doesn't make it to heaven. And then if it is that, why? Because they denied the power thereof. So they're like sounding symbol. So they're like they kept moving. And then would you go that way? I believe not. I know you will not want to go there. And brethren, their race, as we read it, is all in him. Colos in him, sorry. Colossians 2 9. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. You know, when they say there is no Trinity, it's just a word. There is no Godhead in the Bible. There's nothing, it's not written anywhere. You ask yourself, do they read the Bible? Do they read John chapter 14? Did they really read it when Jesus himself says, show us, he says, what, Philip, what else do you want to see? I'm here talking to you. I am he. Philip says, show us the father that we may know him. He says, I, you are looking at, I am he. So if you believe that Yeshua is ultimate, he is supreme, he came from him. Brethren, there's all the ways the enemy had tried to bring blaspheme. Oh, he's only human. He's not this. We're going to look at all those things. When you, as we're reading it, brethren, if the spirit of the Lord is in you, you will shudder. Goosebumps will run through, through you to see what the enemy had tried during the ages. The primary thing is to deny people of the presence of Elohim in their lives. The, his gimmick is to make sure that, okay, since you want to be religious, since you want to go to church, I have another gimmick to do. I have my own to do. For all of them that go to them, at least I'll grab as many. I'll make them look down on the Godhead. I'll make them look down on the supremacy. I'll make them look down and not have it. And then they will be empty, going there for ritual sake. But the actual life, I'll take it away. Brethren, there's no need going on the street, living, living, going though as life or as or as alive, but the person is dead, is empty, empty. Jesus said to the scribes and Pharisees, "Woe unto you! You're like painted sepulchres. Outside you look beautiful, but inside is full of dead men's bones." Satan is still trying to get people to get to the point of dead men's bones. Outside is okay. They have a big Bible. They go to church, but inside is still empty. Very, very empty. How many people are empty? And brethren, tomorrow also, by the grace of Elohim, we are going to look at how many people who still pray today, they try to speak in tongues, they try to do water baptism, but they didn't know what they are doing. It's still there. Satan is so subtle. The Bible says he, 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 he put himself like into a snake and suddenly, you know, creep. So he's still creeping into men to bring deception time why we're not going into more today is that we want to pray but tomorrow we will round this up to go straight the reason where there is divisions the reason why there is different sides the reason why there is different beliefs the reason why things are not happening and who are they i'm sure as i'm talking your homework today is before we come tomorrow go on on the internet search out non-trinitarians that's your own homework today search out what is their belief who are they why did they not but be very careful some of them bring up some arguments that have no basis and unless the spirit of the lord is in you you can see how they rest and twisted all the scriptures just to fill in but man remember what i said if you deny the power of the holy spirit it will not work in you if you deny the power of the Son in you, redemption will be very far. If they deny the Godhead, then you are on your own. 
You are on your own. It's a mystery. And Satan wants us to do what? Analyze it in our finite brain. This brain, this one filled with gray matter, with blood vessels covered with these four, uh, five bones, or five, the parieta, the occipital, and then, and then um, the frontal bones. No, brethren, it is not. He wants us to use our imagination. What is in our imagination? The veil one that does not speak. The one that, you know, when people get drunk, it's gone off. Ordinary drugs and reactions is gone off. Mental illness, when demons come, that's what Satan wants to do. For man, ordinary man, created that we go back to the sand. Go back. That we wouldn't live more than 150 years in our very time to sit down and to start seeing who Elohim is. Brethren, does that not touch you? Even the mention of the name. You know, as Apostle was teaching the other time, the Bible, you know, the, the says that he was so, so awesome that the children of Israel could not even say Yahweh. And they stopped at Y-W-H because to spell that is it's, it, it is so powerful. Brethren, can we see who he is? Why would we sit down to argue, to try to know? By searching, can a man find the Lord? This is mystery. That he is the father, that he is the son, and that he is the holy one, the holy spirit, the holy ghost. Brethren, he is holy. May the Lord help us to remain in awe of him and not allow Satan to deceive us so that we lose the power. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord. These words are so powerful that even a mouth cannot even explain it as it ought to be. But Lord, we believe you've spoken to your children worldwide now. You've spoken to anyone that will receive it this or to listen to say, hang on, enough is enough from Satan bringing in deception and heresies and apostasies. Father, we ask ancient of days that you alone as we open will reveal your yourself so that we stay in awe of you and tomorrow lord we ask precious father that you open the eyes of everyone as we look at how people have the part the form of godliness but the power is not there that will run for our lives father we thank you and we ask so oh lord throughout this period that the teaching on who you are is in course 101 one understanding you that we will have an explicit of understanding of who you are who yeshua is and who the holy spirit is open our mind oh lord to accept the truth thank you father for we know you have heard and answered us in yeshua jesus name we pray amen and 